Hi, thanks for clicking in. Well, Thaksin supporters will be embracing this piece of news with glee. The move to help him return home without him having to go to jail has come one step closer to reality. According to Thai Post editorial today, Deputy Prime Minister Chalom Yu Bumlung has allegedly vowed to amend the Royal Decree on the Royal Amnesty Act to remove a clause stating that those who are eligible to seek a royal pardon must be under state detention or already in jail. If the amendment is passed by Parliament, Salem will go down in history as a deputy PM who bulldozes his way in removing all obstacles, whether they are legal technicalities or personal management, to help just one man and one clan. And you will see another significant development over the oil and gas deal in the Gulf of Thailand when you look at Thai Post main headlines which shout, Thai Gulf MOU Resurrected, Government Struggles to Share Energy Cake, Thaksin to fly to Cambodia on Friday. Matichon says Thaksin's visit to Cambodia will take place after Ying Lak's visit there. So we are not going to see Big Brother meet his PM sister in Cambodia. And Thai Rat screams, Pua Thai fears violation of, of Article 157, stops Pu from meeting brother. Opposite pressures foreign ministry to hunt, to hunt him down. Opposite must be joking. During his premiership, he could not get anyone to arrest Thaksin, even though they knew of his whereabouts. All eyes will of course be on Hun Sen and Thaksin because of earlier WikiLeaks reports of a secret oil deal to share interest. The Ying Lak government has said that if the country could make use of oil and gas in the Thai Gulf, it could put plans for nuclear power plants on hold. Well, that may bode well for the country, taking into account Thailand's unpreparedness in terms of technology and the issue of safety. Meanwhile, after being branded a buffalo, Education Minister Warawat Ua Apinya Kun has quickly retracted what he said about school tea money. Pujit Khan's headline states, Warawat makes you turn over tea money. Matishon had quoted the minister as saying, the Education Ministry cannot really stop parents from giving schools tea money. So, the ministry should think out of the box. If parents want to support schools, they should be allowed to. If they are rich and want their children to be admitted in good schools, they have the right to pay the money. Well, Pujat Khan quoted the chairman of an organization called Instilling Values for Building the Country, Amnoy Santon Chod, as saying that he will take the ministry to the administrative court if the minister allow schools to legally allow the practice of paying tea money. Amnoy says it's unconstitutional on the basis of equal rights. And be prepared to see more and more vehicles on Bangkok's already congested streets thanks to a government plan granting first-time car buyers huge tax exemptions. The plan is being forwarded for cabinet approval today. Pujat Khan's headline state, First-time car buyers banned for five years from, from transferring vehicles. Dream to see sales of 500,000 more cars. Excite tax skyrockets. The government normally earns about 100 billion baht in excise tax from car companies. And with this plan, it expects this income to double. To gain tax exemptions, People must buy cars that are not more than 100,000 cc or pickups of any capacity. The paper says eco cars of which buyers have to pay 60,000 to 65,000 baht in tax will get back all of the tax, while pickup buyers will get a tax refund of about 10,000 to 15,000 baht. Lastly, here's the face of the man who successfully cheated several women on an online dating service by telling them he is a half-Japanese-Korean billionaire. Thai Rat says three women have found they were duped 
by the same man of some thirty thousand baht after sleeping with him, only to find he had fathered children from a string of women. That's all, folks. Bye. Thank you.